What's up guys, Metal Shop TV here. We are back with another interview after quite some time, but it was worth it. We've got an absolute legend in here. We've got Paul from Cannibal Corpse. Enjoy, let's get into it. Well, the record is called Violence Unimagined. Pretty striking name. Uh, so who came up with that name? Um, I did, actually. Um, you know, it, it's weird. Or it seems like myself and Alex are the kind of the two guys that seem to come up with titles, you know, for the for the albums, you know, these days. Um, and, uh, you know, just like the usual, you got to do your brainstorming for for album titles and for song titles and everything. So so when I when I started to think um myself uh i just i thought of the word violence first off because we never even used it in a song title which i thought was kind of odd we never used the word violent or violence in in, in a song title of course we didn't use it in a in an album title but i was like oh man that'd be great yeah that's you know and then i just kind of was thinking you know along that lines of like unimaginable violence or something of that nature and uh you know i just kind of decided on violence unimagined i felt that that had a great ring to it you know with using the word violence first as opposed to at the end of the phrase you know and uh you know to me it's just like wow when i when i came up with it i just thought it was you know awesome title and had a great ring to it and uh you know it sums up what we do it sums up cannibal corpse i mean kind of intriguing it should make you think a little bit you know because you know, if you think of violence in it by on its own, it's well, you know, you can think of a lot of things. But if you're thinking unimaginable violence or violence unimagined, well, I guess you're you're not supposed to be thinking of that because it's unimaginable. So so I, I, I thought, well, that's that's pretty intense. That's a pretty brutal title. So so luckily, everybody, you know, agreed on it. We you know, we still kind of you know, we went. I remember I came up with that early on and everyone. Oh, well, let's see what else we come up with, you know, and then we'll throw our ideas together. Well, nobody came up with anything else. So I was, well, let's use it, guys. I mean, this is, uh, I think, a, a great title. So uh, so we did. So I think it's uh, I think it fits. I, I like it a lot. So. Another thing to fuck up in control Reaping final body parts Such a composition taken on that will be sold Slots wide have a right down the chest Well, a couple of weeks ago uh, I've read an article where you picked uh, the most uh, disgusting or brutal uh, Cannibal Corpse album cover of all time and obviously it was butchered at birth but um what would be your uh, most favorite one not most brutal but most favorite one for whatever reason would it well, be the same I, thing no no actually and it's a great one it is a brutal cover i mean it is our, uh, it's it's a tough call but i would go with eating back to life actually i think eating back to life just something about eating and maybe a lot has to do with it's the most special because it's your first record as well you know when you're finally putting out a CD or an album for the first time and you're looking at your album cover. I mean, you're going, holy crap, we made it. This is insane. Here, here's our album, you know? Um, but when I do look at Eaton, just the, like, and there's detail in all the records and two and, and, and butchered has it a lot, but, but I don't know something about the way Eaton's drawn, you know, with just the action shot and everything with the, you know, with him ripping himself open. And I, I love the color scheme and everything. I mean, You know, so so I think it's a mix of everything. It's just like I really like the art a lot, and it being exactly, you know, our first album, um, you know, that's uh, you know, it's a huge deal. So, but yeah, eating back to life would be the one. Do you remember the first time you saw that uh, cover? Where you like, yeah, this is perfect, or where you like, whoa, isn't this too much? No, no, this is what we were, obviously that's what we were going for. I mean, we, when we were, when we started the band and we decided to call the band Cannibal Corpse, um, we wanted to take everything to the next level. We wanted to take it to the point where we haven't seen as fans, you know, um, we, we wanted to be able to, as like a fan of music, we wanted to walk into a record store and pick up something like eating back to life and go, wow, I need to buy this. Cause that's what we were doing is 
fans at that time, you know, or the mid eighties, you know, you're going into a record store and picking up a record and you're uh, 80% of your uh, albums you bought was on a, on that, just what it looked like, you know, in the back and the picture of the band and the song titles, you know? So we, we, the fact that we were able to do it ourselves, we wanted to take it to that next level. So when we saw eating back to life, I know we were all like, yeah, this is awesome. This is amazing. What a great cover, you know? I mean, it's it's definitely what we want to see as fans of music, you know, fans of the crazy heavy stuff. So so I you know, I kind of you know, it's hard to remember where we saw that first might have been in might have been in Barnes's apartment. I can't remember um, because he was dealing with Vince back then in the early days. And he would have probably been the, the one that received the, uh, you know, the picture first or the art or the art. And uh, I believe it was in his place that we might have all got together as a band. Kind of fully hard to remember, but I think that's that's how it went down. But oh, but you know, pure excitement, of course. Now butchered, on the other hand, when we saw that, I mean, we obviously didn't expect. I think butchered. You're not expecting it to be that brutal because Eaton's brutal, but then butchered's taking it just to that next level of intensity. And then we were just like, oh, holy shit! This is just. This is crazy. Of course, we're going with it because we're Cannibal Corpse, and this is, like I said, what we want and what we, you know, what we want as as fans and and a band and all this. But it, but that definitely, I think, hit us a little more, a little harder. We weren't probably expecting a piece of that insane, you know, as a butchered at birth cover. So, so, but but hey, we're Cannibal Corpse, and that's what we need, right? Great memories. I I wasn't even born back then. <laughs> Yeah, you know, make making me feel old, man. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry for that. No, it's all right. Excuse me, it's Greg here. Thank you. I know from people around me that a lot of them discovered Cannibal Corpse through the movie Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. So uh, what was it like uh, to be in a Hollywood movie for you? Uh, <laughs> what, are your me- what are your memories of that? Yeah, I mean, that's something you can never forget, of course. You know, I mean, that was such an exciting thing to happen. You know, I mean, we're just kids from Buffalo, New York at that point, you know. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're a death metal band here. And now then we're getting asked to be in this movie, uh, a Jim Carrey movie that's obviously, uh, you know, going to be a comedy and all this kind of thing. So so it was very different and uh, and exciting at the same time, because it was like, yeah, why not? You know, this sounds like fun. I think, we you know, we need to do this as long as uh, I, obviously we had a little bit of worry, you know, just making sure we weren't going to be silly in the movie or portrayed as silly because we're dealing with, you know, a comedy here. You know, we just want to make sure we're not being ridiculed in, in, or in any way. I and mean, we were assured that wasn't going to be the case and all that. So but man, wow, what a great experience. I mean, um You know, we, I remember we flew down to, uh, so we were living in Buffalo and it was filmed in Miami, Florida. And, uh, we, we were only there for four days. We were filming for two days, but right. We flew from Buffalo to Miami. Um, you know, we had, uh, I think it was maybe, I can't think it was maybe the first day off and we filmed for two days and then we had like another day off and then we left. But, uh, but you know, I just remember it being, you know, cool and just crazy and awesome kind of things because yeah we're on a movie set for the first time i mean seeing a hollywood picture being made and being a part of it uh, was definitely a very cool thing to see and witness and and uh you know i just remember you know long days you know like they shoot all day and you know i mean the the whole movie uh you know the the adage hurry up and wait because uh you know you always something's going on you got to be ready but being ready means you might be sitting there for three hours before anything gets done you know because there's always something behind the scenes happening that needs to be taken care of so it was um, like I, really really professional oh yeah i mean it was completely professional i mean it, i'm sure there's more professional um but it is a blo- it is a big movie being made i know it was jim's first movie 
And I'm sure there's bigger movies being made, obviously, probably was spending more money and all that kind of thing. But either way, it was, a, you know, it was done like a, it's a Hollywood picture here. That's, you know, when you, you, they're when they're when they're buying up like a couple floors of a hotel for them, you know, the whole crew and, uh, you know, the movie people to stay in. And that's where they do everything. And, you know, so it was it was a huge deal. It was definitely a huge deal that we obviously were never a part of before. So. Um, so it was, it was cool to witness all that for sure, you know, to, to see how it's made and, and, uh, you know, uh, to us, it was always the weird thing of like, you know, yeah, here we're playing on, you know, in the movie, but we're not playing, of course, you know, you, you, it's not like, oh, you play live. It's, you know, well, no, you got to actually be very quiet. <laughs> you know, there's dialogue happening. So, you know, you got to pretend you're playing and you got to pretend you're hearing music and all that. But you got to be completely silent here because, right, Jim might have lines or there's lines going on or some dialogue happening. So so that was kind of, you know, interesting to, you know, to be, you know start playing hammer smash face and you hear the music for maybe five seconds and then then it's just nothing and then we're 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 air banding to, to nothing and the fans in front of us are slamming and moshing around to nothing and it was very bizarre you know but obviously that's the way movies have to be made you know so uh so it was, it was interesting to to be a part of all that and uh yeah definitely an experience of course we'll never forget and and uh, you know, all thanks to Jim Carrey. So that was that was awesome. So is it true that Jim Carrey is indeed a diehard metal fan and also a fan of Cannibal Corpse, or is it something that fans just made up to make it look more interesting? No, I mean that's you know back then. See, the interesting thing about it though, or the weird thing is, right? We got to be in the movie because Jim wanted us in the movie. It wasn't like you know casting or you know we get there and Jim's like who who's coming? I don't know. Oh, Cannibal Corpse. No, he wanted us in the movie. Jim wanted us in the movie. Right. I know there was interviews and things of him at that time, just before that, of talking about death metal and and heavy music like this, of uh, being very interesting and intriguing to him because obviously it was very new to the world. And, uh, and, and, it, and it, it grabbed him, I guess. So he wanted us in the movie. And when we met him and we flew down there, he was freaking out like, Oh my God, get a corpse. And we're like in awe of standing in front of Jim Carrey. It's like Jim Carrey, we're in a movie set. I mean, you're, you know, you're a huge movie star. Well, not a movie star at that point. He was a television star. It was sort of at his first movie, but he was huge in the States because of his TV show that he was on. And, uh, and we're in awe of, of being there, you know, but he wanted us there. It was, he loved us being there, wanted us there and rattling off song titles, what he wanted us to do. And, you know, whatever you guys want, we were treated like Kings, you know, which was amazing. So, so that's why we got to do the movie because of Jim Carrey. But like I said, the interesting thing or weird thing is right. Does he still like it? Does he still, we have no clue. Ever since that movie concluded, and we're talking early 90s, so it's pre-cell phone, pre-internet, pre-all that, right? You know, So it was, nobody ever stayed in contact with anybody, and we don't know. I, I, you always wonder, like, is Jim, yeah, is he getting excited to get the new record in, in, in two days? Or, or is he sitting here going, what the hell was I thinking? I can't believe I like this kind of this crap, you know what I mean? So, so interesting, right? We never found out. Is he still a fan? Was it, was it just a passing fad for him? Or, you know, I, I, we will never know maybe, you know, um, but. So that's that's kind of you know where we're at. Well, I guess we'll always have to ponder unless, for some chance, somebody cross paths with somebody that that would know something. But you know, it hasn't happened yet, so who knows? I guess we have to invite him for an interview and ask him. That, that's the only thing that can be done. Somebody would have to actually really ask him, yeah, because you know the centuries of torment. DVD um, that we did with the, uh, the the girl Denise that made the DVD and the whole thing. She wanted to get him in there, of course. You know, he'd have had a, a great interview, you know, to have. She couldn't even. She could get nothing out of him. No contact. Nothing. Not even close to getting anywhere near him or getting any contact with him. And she probably had a lot of you know resources to be able to hopefully do that. So so it was kind of crazy that we couldn't even come close to getting a hold of him and. Uh, You know, so it just has to be, yeah, somebody that would have to ask him that question, you know, at some point, you know, so, so uh, I'm, I'm interested, I'm, I'm curious, you know, so hope, hopefully, hopefully we'll know at some point before we die. 